Welcome to Lootopia, where we are building our own utopian homestead. Tonight, we're going to talk about how to defend yourself against hyperinflation, some thrifty ideas that hopefully keep money in your pocket. Now, before we dive into that, understand that we are, our intention is to try to stay away from some topics that are forbidden. It's like Baltimore, where you can't say his name. <laughs> Our YouTube he who shall not be named. Yeah, YouTube will <laughs> drop the bomb on you. So I'm going to try to make this for YouTube, but you know, if I get on a soapbox, it's done. And uh, we won't publish this on YouTube. We'll put this on Odyssey and Brighton and BitChute. I always forget about BitChute, but they're, uh, we're over there too. Um, I've been a BitChute like four years. So, you know, shout out to BitChute. They're a good platform as well. And by the way, that's Brighteon. I always say it Brighton, but it's actually Brighteon. Is it? Yeah. Um, I've I've been like on it oh, for like a neon. year. Oh, like neon. Yeah. Yeah. I've been on it for a year, and uh, and then I heard someone else say it, and I was like, I've been saying it wrong for a year. I always thought it was Brighton too. <laughs> I don't know. With me, as always, is my partner in crime, Lorelai. She does not like being on film, so you will not see her, but you will hear her chime in and run the show in the background. So. We're going to talk about the first, uh, oh boy, where do we even start? So we're going to go through like a hit list of ideas. And if we say something that you're interested in, I'll try to include links, but also just ask me questions in the comments. So uh, if you have other things you want to add, because this is a short list, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not everything by any means. But a lot of people say, how do you homestead? Because, you know, I'm basically retired. Um, how do you homestead and make all this work? And the answer is we live um, a pretty good lifestyle, but with little money. And we are very frugal. You got to play a really mm -hmm. good defense if um, if you want to not be a slave to the system. I mean, as soon as you're dependent on a job that someone else runs, someone else can decide if they fire you or some things like the pandemic because you know i had an office right as this pandemic started and uh i can't say why on youtube but i closed it <laughs> so it's forbidden um but being that being said uh you know it was one of those things that i had the freedom to do it and walk away and and, and we were okay but there's a lot of people stuck out there in jobs that they can't get out of or they're so deep in debt that or they're just surviving on like a social security check and they're making ends meet. If you talk to those kind of people, they already know how to do all this stuff. Um, been doing it for years. Been doing it for years, yeah. And they're good at it and, and lots of tips. So we're going to try to get through this together. And let's start first with inflation. And what I mean by that is my partner, Lorelai here, we are slowly buying rice. And like it's just kind of a staple. You, it's the we one of the cheapest. Of yeah, we eat a lot of rice, and it's just one of the cheapest things you can kind of stock up on. So you know, we try to order a twenty-pound bag here and there. That being said, this was four weeks ago, and we were getting a twenty-pound bag of what we call ghetto rice. I guess it's almost five weeks. Well, ago, no, actually, this is this is better rice. This is medium grain, medium grain rice. Um, that. Medium grain rice is a little higher end. It's you know yeah, it's not the ghetto rice. It's yeah, the ghetto rice is the the really cheap long grain rice at Walmart for like eight bucks for twenty pounds. Um, and then what happened? Bam! Oops, wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> Bam! Rice after. Yep, I went to and guess how much it is. Put it in now. my car and the price came up and I was shocked. Like that's a lot. And what are we talking about? This was like not even a month apart. Mm -hmm. And that is for you guys that are math nerds. And it was actually, I, it was, you know, I took that picture, that screenshot of that one is like almost two weeks ago. Two weeks, So it right? was like three weeks in between. I was like, you know what? I'm going to grab another bag of rice just because, you know, it was when all this stuff started with the fertilizer plants burning down and yeah we knew the grains were going to start disappearing getting expensive and they were talking about bad crops and i was like you know what i'm just gonna <clears throat> grab an extra bag and it went up like seven dollars <laughs> like so you, that's a lot there's a combination here right because part of it is hyperinflation 
you know, shrinkflation. You, shrinkflation, where they're making nice packages movie. smaller. And there's also, um, you know, the disasters going on that's making less supply as well. So the there's, pandemic where nobody was working. And the, a year behind on supplies of food. You know, they were we stuck in ports. Shipping issues. Shipping and... issues. And then, you know, um, America, who is the world police, have started a war with everybody. And so now those countries are like, yeah, we're just keeping our food. You know, we're not shipping to you anymore. We're not and so, We're not exporting our fertilizer. <laughs> yeah, with, yeah, and the fertilizer. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so the there's drops right there. So that's that's a deal, too. Um, all this perfect storm is showing up over there. So that is an increase of 30%. And what is it we've 30%? Been, it seems like more. What we've been noticing is most things are going up anywhere from 20 to 40% overnight. Like, you bought something today, right, that... Oh, what was it? We jumped us. Was it pasta sauce, or was it... Oh, yeah, my pizza sauce. Just great value Walmart pizza sauce. I, us I used it, like, a year ago, I got it for $1.19 a jar. And I was irritated because for before that, it was 99 cents forever. Yeah. And then it went up. To $1.19, and I was like, you know, mildly irritated because that's like a 20 cent jump. That's a big jump. Nobody really, you know. It's a big one. And overnight, too, like you checked out something you bought. Oh, it was the cornstarch. Oh, the cornstarch, yeah. Cornstarch, you bought it and then went back to buy more. We actually a day use later. a lot of cornstarch, so. Yeah. Like thickening agents, egg replacer, things like that. And so I was like, you know, I'm going to stock up on them. They had the regular size cans for a um, dollar, and I went back, and they're $1.34 now. Yeah. That's insane. 34% a jump overnight. So you're seeing overnight jumps between anywhere from 20 to 40%. So where the game you want to play right now is not everything has been inflated yet. They're going through, and the way a lot of companies are doing it is when they have to reorder and put stuff out, that's when, that's when it goes, the new SKUs go in and they raise the price. So if you can shop and find some of the old stuff that's still out there that hasn't jumped yet, you can still get the old price, but that's not going to last more than a few more weeks. Like, you've got to get out and start buying stuff because everything's about to increase that a, a lot. When we were still shopping, I did that with split peas at Walmart. We bought all of them. Because they yeah. only had like seven bags left. Buy them all Little one-pound bags, and we just grabbed them. And when the next time we went back, they had jumped up in price. And what, I mean, I'm pretty happy with our buys because we bought hard when stuff was on sale. And that's another lesson. We bought hard before Dollar Tree switched over, too. Yeah, we knew Dollar Tree was going to jump to 125 And we went in there and just bought as much as we could of our favorite stuff. Because that is a significant, when you add taxes in, that's a significant jump. 25%. Plus taxes, you know, the yeah. tax goes up on that 25% jump too, you know. So that being said, uh, that was a hard reality to watch. But then, you know, I'm already starting to see rationing in, in other countries. And what will happen right now, the food is pretty good. Like if you go out right now, they're pulling some sort of magic trick. I don't know how they have the stock. Well, it's again, it's less and less it's of a selection. Less it's still there. But the shelves You can are still, still get pasta, but you're not going to get rotini. Right. You're going to, like, I haven't been able to find And rotini. you're noticing, like, weird brands starting to pop up. Small regional brands are filling the shelves that Walmart would have never touched before. That means yep. that the big suppliers are, are dwindling down. So they're starting to buy, they're starting to make deals with the local guys. And when that runs out, where else are they getting it from? Can't get it from overseas anymore because all the sanctions and the, you know, the, the other nobody's, countries are like... Nobody's exporting, and even if they are, then the, this is the our ports are now. all jacked up, and you can't yeah. really... It's, you know, especially wheat. We had talked about that, you know, most of that comes out of Ukraine and Russia and China. Three and Canada. In Canada, which, you know, with that border problem there that we're not allowed to talk about, we shall just pretend we all know what each other's talking about and only... Like <laughs> you know, you know. Um, anyway, so the rationing, and we are starting to see this, especially I think it was in Germany and some other countries have Germany started rationing. Germany was doing like World War II style rationing. Yeah, and here's an old like... picture I have up of back in the day when this happened, the last big wars. Oh, yeah, um, is that the. Yeah, where it's telling you what you can buy. and The conscientious you know. citizen or whatever it is. Yeah, loyal citizens. Loyal citizens. Do not hoard. Oh, yeah, and now you're a bad guy if you hoard. Um, which we call it being prepared, and it was considered being reasonable and responsible 
you know, take care of your family, but now, now you're a dirty hurting, order. And it's really, because like, everybody else is irresponsible. Like order and, shaming all over yeah, social And media I, I see that getting worse. And I love I'll just my neighbors, so I, you know, yeah. only take what I need. Sure. But what have you been doing for the last, you know, as these preppers have been buying for, I've been doing stuff for 15 years. Like, so if I've been hoarding for 15 years, you know, no, I'm just being smart about buying. When something's on sale, you, you get it. And this is another lesson, right? Yep. Like, we get what's on sale for 15. Well, that's, I mean, we're that's at the just point, the way yeah. we live. Because we stocked up over the years, we have been able to... Now we can shop only sales. Yeah, because we have now the basics. Now there's a few things like fresh produce that. And we're trying to grow those. Yeah. You know, so because we I'm will tired get to the point. My celery went up from what was it like a dollar twenty nine for celery a celery stock... jumped to one eighty nine, right? No, one ninety eight. One ninety eight. It went all the way up, and Almost now up. it's back down to one forty. But I think as soon as I click it, it'll probably go. Back <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> there's a game right now where you're going to have to. Um, Play this game and shop around and find stuff that has not jumped yet. And we have some stuff we're going to show you that'll help. But uh, before we dive into that, different stores run different yeah, good we, sales. We were going to talk about that. You have to you have to shop um, rotate your stores. So we um, basically our daughter got a uh, a gift card to Target. We almost never shop at Target because it's. Although I like the experience, it's expensive. It's just good 20% markup walking in there. For clothes and stuff, but what we found yeah. is the food is it has a, not, it's like a dirty little secret. There's some of their canned stuff and their staples that are really, they're even lower prices than Walmart. And that's what we usually compare it because, you know, Walmart's usually the cheapest place to get stuff. Not always, but well, for certain here, things. It's usually the cheapest. And so if things beat Walmart prices, we buy. And this is what I was talking about. Some of the stores that don't get shopped as much like you'll go to the weird grocery stores like Lowe's or Ingalls or, or um, and not a lot of people shop there. Not as many, so their stuff stays on the shelf longer, and they have not sold out, and then repriced. So if you can get to those stores and find your favorites, buy them all. You know, you have that. We have a particular soup we really like, and when we see it, we buy, we buy it, it all. <laughs> you know, and that jumps because price as soon been, as they restock it. There's been months where we couldn't get it. Yeah. That's right. It just disappeared for a while and then rebranded or something and probably shrinkflated in a, in a new package. If you don't know what shrinkflation is, is that is when, you know how candy bars used to be big when we were kids and now they got smaller and smaller and they go, oh and no, smaller. it's just because you were a kid that it seemed bigger. No. But if you actually look at an old candy bar, like there's videos of it, look it up sometime. And it's like almost half the size now. And the big tell you will see is they will announce on the package that it's a brand new packaging, same old bar. You know, they'll say that. But if you look at the weight, it's like, oh, this is two ounces. No, less. it's the same recipe, but it's not the it'll same say, size. Oh, it'll say something like same great taste. Yeah. New package, new fresh package. You know, something like that. So anytime something gets a new package, you got shrinkflated. Yep. You know, same price. Done. Same price. So that's the way same they keep Same great price. price. Same <laughs> great <laughs> price, but less. So that is that is another sneaky way to get you. Um. All right, so let's talk about, so we're giving you the advice about shopping different stores before they um, restock, and if you can catch those, your favorites, buy them all, because you'll you'll get a discount, you know, 30, 40% right now, basically. And sometimes, this is a weird thing too, Lorelai will find stuff on Walmart online that she will not find That we in cannot the store. find in the stores. And there's, and they vice haven't. And vice versa. There's been a couple things that we can only versa. find in the store that I can't find online. And they haven't quite caught it up on the app yet. What was the one the other day that I sent you a link to it and you couldn't get to it? Only I could through my app. That was immediate my... grain rice. It was 11 bucks. It was the last of it. It was the last of it. So there was a 20-pound bag of medium grain rice, the, a different brand, and it would show up on Walmart. In some reason, because it wasn't in the store, it had not got priced up 30% like all the other rice. It's just... So there's like particular on... one bag that you could only get online was still cheap. and So I, I bought six of them and they canceled my order for one bag. So, so you go. probably got the last one. They're five. probably wondering what's the deal with medium grain rice. We just prefer it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, it's, it's harder it's to get. And when stuff starts disappearing, the specialty things go first. So like 
like Lorelai was saying, you get pasta, but it's going to be like ghetto spaghetti. It's not going to be like the rotini. You're going to get macaroni and, and spaghetti. Yeah. spaghetti so you're not going to get the thin or the angel hair. Or gluten-free. Yeah. Or anything gluten -free made out of chickpea or lentil, like the specialized stuff. What will happen is when, you remember the last, last year, the rush on pasta, everybody bought the cheapest stuff first. And then you could buy the really, really expensive, like here, here's a red lentil pasta. And then that disappeared. For three thirty nine a box. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, when, people got nervous and even bought that stuff. But it took another few weeks before the expensive stuff went. Yeah, what was it? The uh, when the whole meat department was sold out. The tofu. Was oh, I, still I believe there. I have a picture of that. We're not tofu scared. <laughs> We're not tofu scared yet. Uh, let's see. I think I have that in here somewhere. Um, Oh, but, so we're kind of lucky with that. Like any of our vegan junk food is still, yeah. there's still plenty of it out there. And I remember when they made a big run on the meat, like all the, the vegan stuff was still there. <laughs> and I was like, you know, but then that all went. Well, and then when they do veganary, <laughs> yeah, all the was, leftover stuff, we get crazy that deals was great on that. deals too. All right. So let's keep going here. Um, so we're going to talk to you about shopping at discount stores. Now you'd be like, yeah, I shop at Sam's or Costco. And that's not what we're talking about. I am actually talking about these are independent stores and you will find them usually outside your town or in your town and you probably know some and you might have to drive a little bit but it's worth the trip you might even have to drive an hour or two what they are stores that buy pallets of damaged food or expired food and then they sell it for pennies and we're really lucky that we have a close one that kicks butt Although they weren't getting food for a while, it's getting harder and harder. We're getting less and less choices. But when it comes in, we buy hard. We just hard. went in and buy, buy hard. I mean, hundreds of dollars of stuff that would normally cost probably $1,000, you know. But, I mean, the deals are incredible. In incredible. What, you're talking like, what was it, like $250 for I think we several grocery carts of food? We had five yeah. grocery carts of food for $200-something dollars. 250 I think. 250 I think was what it yeah. was. So, and I mean, that's pretty crazy. Pretty much everything food item there costs a dollar. So let's show them some of the stuff. Um, here's some examples. And we're going to also get to a few of our favorites that are still at the Dollar Tree. Even though the Dollar Tree has really ticked us off because it's $1.25. But stuff like this. So what happens is these companies will sell um, either expired or damaged food. So this corner is damaged. And these things are a two-pack, uh, is a two-pack of three-seed sweet potato crackers, gluten-free. And I believe and there's a this whole thing there. is, yes, yeah, 30 ounces. So this would be something you would see at, like, Sam's Club probably for 12 bucks, 10, yeah, 12 bucks. Yeah, because um, their price on there, like, anything gluten-free is expensive. And Anybody like, that's gluten-free knows how expensive It's like the large is. size. Um, here's some other examples. So what will happen is sometimes the very expensive health food stuff will expire. And so here's some that are in the stores. And you've probably seen these on your stores. Annie's is always expensive. Cascadian Farm. Um, notice the price. One dollar. They're marked down. And I'm not even sure these are expired. I think they just get close. They but get the close. people that spend that much money on those Let's things see. are pretty, you know. Oh, no. Expired in 2021. Oh, did it? But... The what's thing the, is they're sealed five years past the expiration. You yeah, what, almost, what's the rule for people don't know? Canned, I know for a fact, even like the FDA will tell you it's five years. Five past. years after that. Remember, this is the best of date. This is it's their sell-by date. It's not really expired. No, and even produce and stuff is the best by date on it. I would so say it's best by it's not rotten after that date. Maybe day. when we buy cereals like this, one out of 50 are stale. Like they're maybe. still packaged well. Or they'll be ripped inside yeah, I was gonna and blew a dollar. If, if the package is damaged. Yeah. Then. Um, something like this. So high-end stuff. All right. This was a two-pound thing of cashews. Two pounds. Was it two? Norm I thought it was more than two. Is it? Net weight, 35 ounces. It's like 2.2. 2.2. So cashews, right? Not super expensive. What would this normally Those cost Those are raw store? cashews. Uh, raw cashews, I probably 20 think bucks. I pay, I think the... Best that I could find was like broken pieces, and they were like fourteen ninety nine. Yeah, for a two pound bag. For a two pound, so they marked this in half at first. It was eight dollars, and, and then, that's if you can even find raw cashews. They're getting harder and harder to find. So this was a good price when it started, but what happened is they had a whole pallet of these things, and they just wanted to get rid of them. And after like a week or two, they just are like, okay, the people that bought them for eight dollars bought them. So now we're gonna make the deal real sweet. 
we're gonna make them four dollars. So we come in at eight. I think we bought like one bag at eight, and then we bought a bunch more at oh, four. Oh, I think we got like three bags at eight because we were like, that's just that's a great idea. deal. And then they went to four, and then at the very end, they couldn't get rid of all of them, and they dropped them to two dollars a bag. Oh, I think you went in and asked, what would and you I was do like, if I bought the rest of and them? I, and I bargain with these places. I'll be like, okay, if I buy everything left on the shelf, will you do it for two bucks? And they'll be just like, yeah, just we just want to get rid of them. So and it's so, a high turnover. They need to turn over. <clears throat> that kind of stuff. Oh, and then you'll, uh, like, we try to go for high-calorie stuff because this is what you're going to want in the grid-down situation. You can, you know, mix stuff. So I asked about this, and they said it was because all the oil was on top. Yeah, the mixed nuts. Now, also expired probably. I didn't check the date. Um, but we opened one up to check it, and this is the kind that does not have peanuts, so it's already expensive. Because anything peanut-free is going to be Yeah, expensive. I think it's like cashew, almond, and... And look at the size. I mean, and... it's significant. This is a good 26-ounce jar. And it's what a the... decent size jar. I mean, a jar of peanut butter that size in the store now is like 7 bucks, I think. 6 7 bucks for a good... And this is like a, a decent brand, too, right? Yeah. So the deal with that, though, was when we opened it up, the oil had drained all out, and we had to basically... Oh, I just it, right? turned them. I just turned it upside down. Yeah, you can finally... just store them upside down. After a few months, they'll they'll get better. Like the oil will drain in and out, right? Yeah, so it'll it'll go further and it yeah. goes pretty fast. Like in a couple of days, it jumped down, and I just basically had to take a butter knife and stir it up. Yeah. Just poke holes in it, let it soak in a little bit. Poke and... holes. And I mean, it's a little bit of work, but for twenty five cents, can you? Really... Oh, I forgot to tell them what we paid for. Yeah, these, these were four for a dollar. Twenty five cents, four for a dollar, because they were trying to liquidate them. Twenty five cents, crazy. So... so I don't even know what this would cost. It's roasted almonds, cashews, pumpkin seed, and chia seed. No, yeah. these are the stores you're trying to look for. The discounts you want to find. Because you don't realize you can bargain in these stores. What they do is they go out and they buy all these broken pallets of stuff. So what happens is these stores, like, you know, the big grocery stores, will donate a bunch of their stuff to food banks. But they only can do so much of that, and then they hit their limit, and they don't really get too much credit for that off their taxes anymore. So what they will do is start liquidating pallets of damaged food and stuff that's expired and stuff that they can't really give to a food bank, and somebody will buy it. And then they buy it for almost nothing. If you could be that guy that buys pallets. Well, they can donate to a food bank, but they usually but, don't. If, somebody if it's expired, sell it. I think they don't. Um, I'm not sure what the And that's what a lot of this stuff is. The laws are different or damaged. in every state. Yeah, I don't know. But some reason they sell pallets of this food. So, coconut oil, that was right? Organic, unrefined. Yeah, unrefined coconut oil. Organic. Extra virgin coconut oil. It's really, really good. What's the price stuff. on that? $1. $1. You know, so... And I think we got, like, five jars of this. Like, so those are around. Um, this, by far, is the best one I've ever seen anywhere. What, the coconut oil? No, oh, the store. The store. Yeah, the ones I remember shopping when I was in Atlanta and Savannah. I lived at both. Um, they had these, but they were, like, small corner stores that some guy was running. The one we go to is in Myrtle Beach, and it has... It is, like, Walmart size. It's huge. It it's has huge all kinds has... of appliances and shelving and furniture and bicycles and and it's Some all clothes, like uh we got speedo bathing suit for the kids. Yeah, speed, speedo bathing suit for, for like, five bucks. Yeah, five dollars. Because like there was like a stitch out or something. No, there was nothing wrong with nothing. it. They just I think it was just them. clearance, you know, like oh seasonal clearance probably. Okay, so hopefully that gives you some ideas that you can still buy food like that, and a lot of people don't know about that. Um. All right, we're going to go to the next section. Learn to cook. If you want to save money, learn to cook. And uh, a lot of people that watch these channels are kind of homesteaders themselves, so they're already hip on this. But there's a lot of people out there that wish they could homestead. And there's younger generations of people that have grown up completely on prepared meals and microwave food and fast food, and their parents didn't even know how to cook, really. And so that's what cooking is to them. They don't know how to use raw ingredients. I had a friend that told me that she made from scratch, and it was because she took the Stover's lasagna and had to cook it in the oven for an hour. That was made from scratch? That's made from scratch. I, they don't even know what scratch means. Like, making wow. from scratch is, you know, like, with the individual ingredients, and you cook them all separately and then put them together and make something. And That's right. So like a cat, you got to make everything from scratch. That's right. <laughs> That's why they're such good bakers. Joke. They are such good bakers. They make everything from scratch. Yeah, right. and that was another cake mixes. I made this from scratch. So, 
the easy thing to do is find like three or four recipes you really like. You're like, man, I love pad thai. Well, I'm going to go on YouTube and figure out how to make a cheap version of pad thai. That's what I did with hummus. I had no yeah, idea what went in it. Make no hummus. idea what went in it. But hummus is actually pretty easy once you learn it. And oh, it's yeah. it's delicious fresh. It is so much better than the store-bought stuff. So now I do dessert hummus. I do the chocolate hummus and the regular. And soon you'll become a snob where everything, if you go to a restaurant, you'll be like, oh, this is, I can make this Oh, yeah, for... we don't even eat out, ever. We're so offended by the prices of eating out and the food like, quality. Like, do you know what I could get if we just like, went to the Asian market? For 50 could... bucks, you know how many dumplings we could buy? You know, like, even prepared food at the store is still way cheaper than, and, and we're talking about buying staples like you know get the rice and beans and the the flour and learn how to make stuff um and you'll be like well you know i don't know how to cook all that stuff well just pick like two or three recipes and get really good at those well, and find you, cheap ones even if you don't know how to make like or you don't have the ability or the know-how or the desire to peel a potato chop it up and boil it get canned diced potatoes in a can it's already yeah. done for you and that's still way cheaper still way than cheaper. buying a can a and, can of soup. Well, it used to be where you could go out and get like a five dollar meal from a Chinese place, and I was like, well, are I can't. Gone, you know, man. I can kind of not even make it for five bucks. And then after the restaurants and inflation is skyrocketing, especially in the restaurant air. I mean, forget even meat prices now; they're going to be insane if they can get it. And um, what will happen is, you know, you. I remember. I think the very last time I ate out was like four years ago. We went to Burger King for the Impossible Whopper when it came out. And we spent like $35 at Burger King. And I was like, this is stupid. You know what I could do for $35? $35. $35. And like, yeah, That's we could groceries buy, for a week. We could, yeah, basically, if we really went down to the, Once the basics. Once you have your spices and your, your yeah. staples in the house. So let's talk about the other thing here with this is... Uh, so why are you bring it up? Oh. Spices. So originally we had gone to like the Dollar Tree thinking we were saving all this money on spices. And, and for some aspect, it's a good way to start if you don't have a lot of money. Never buy spices at a grocery store. Unless it's like Walmart Unless does have sale. their own kind of yeah, like great value dollar ones. Were, but, the, but, but those aren't a dollar The exact same either. stuff is just repackaged with but if you another get like label the on the Dollar Tree. Yeah, McCormick is basically like, the same stuff at Big Lots. And that's like three three fifty nine for a little. So we'll give you a clue here. The Dollar Tree used to be an okay deal if you were just like a single person and you just didn't want to have a lot of spice. If you're not going to cook a lot, it's okay. Um, Big Lots has a much better price on spices. One dollar and it's double the size of the Dollar Tree. So we switched from going to Dollar Tree and getting spices to getting them. At and last Big time Lots. we were in Big Lots, they had not marked them up yet. They were still a dollar. So, and, and same with the Loma Linda. They were still a dollar there. So, there. if you haven't been to Big Lots, Big Lots actually has a dollar section that is a whole aisle of dollar foods. And you can still find stuff there for a buck. Even though the Dollar Tree went to 125 you can find a lot of the exact same stuff over at Big Lots. And they haven't jumped it yet. And I talked to the, the kids working there, and he said that they fly through that stuff ever since the Dollar Tree went up. Yeah. So if you didn't know about Big Lots, go over there and, and check it out. It'll save you 30%. But then we stumbled across. <laughs> but then we were like, you know, we're we, planning on at least being self-sufficient for two to three years. So how much spice do we go through at that? And I sure as hell can't do that at the Dollar Tree. That's hundreds of dollars of spice. Since we cook, we use a lot of spice. And we decided, okay, let's buy the bulk spice. Now, these I got actually on Amazon. And surprisingly, amazing, amazing deal. price. We worked it all out, and it's way better price than what you and can get for the dollar. This is another lesson we were talking about buying price per unit. And it's really, really important to price per unit. And I know a lot of you guys shop at Sam's Club and Costco and stuff, and you buy bulk. But sometimes those price per units for bulk are not that great. No, a lot of times they're not. So you can get stuff like this at a restaurant supply store, but surprisingly, the easiest in I well, think the actually, most affordable place is Amazon. Walmart is one of the worst places for it because I will see something for a decent price and go and check it out and there'll always be like a two pack or a four pack. And it's like five dollars more than what you would just if you ordered two individually. Yeah. And it is it's sealed in mylar. Now, obviously, you know, once you open this puppy, you're going to have to probably put it in jars. I would put it in jars with the oxygen. Yeah, oxygen absorbers in jars if you're going to go long term. 
Um, but let me have the other one. But you can also get, I mean, these were each 25 to $30. And, you know, if you compare that to what you would buy at McCormick, like some of the spices, I think we had to buy sesame seed once at a place. And it was like six bucks, seven bucks for a little thing. It of was sesame. $8 for this tiny little thing and, of sesame and it was ridiculous. Yeah. And this is just garlic powder. So we use, a, you know, the most staples, a lot of people are going to use cinnamon, garlic powder, onion powder, salt, yep. and pepper. And, you know, just hit the basics with that. And if you were kind of have a small family or something, that will last you probably two or three years. But when all you're doing is cooking and there's no more prepared meals, there's no more prepared you're going to go through the and spices. What happens spices when shipping Spices are really important. Yeah, when shipping stops, half these spices aren't even made in this country. Like, how are you going to get cinnamon? Nobody grows it in America. How are you going to get cloves? I don't even think it will grow here. I don't, I don't think it does. Um, so stuff like that that is from overseas and the shipping starting to shut down, buy hard. Buy a lot of cinnamon. Because I don't think you'll see it again in this lifetime. Yeah, there's for a, a few a things long time. that we looked into that. Now the garlic powder, we can obviously we can grow make garlic. our garlic. We can make our onion. You can actually but, grow cloves if you're warm enough. But to grow garlic, harvest it, dehydrate it, grind, grind it, it, and store it, it was just way yeah. for, for as cheap as it cheap is. Cheap as we're gonna kick ourselves. Okay, say we can't get this stuff in a year, and we're gonna be sitting around going, why the hell didn't we spend twenty five dollars and get a jug? We're going to have that talk of yep. why do we well, make this so like, hard? It, not even $25. Either. Yeah, those I don't think cheap. those think were those cheaper. Are, I think they're like... But you'll you'll find them on Amazon. I, if I can dig them up, I'll link them in Amazon. That'll be easy for you. Okay, there's also some things you can do if you are getting... And this is kind of after things collapse, but um, the flour alternatives. Now, you can make flour... A lot of people that don't bake don't realize this. You can make flour just about on anything if you grind it. So... Like, all your grains, pretty much. Zucchini? But if you were going to grow stuff out of your garden... You can replace a lot of squashes, pumpkin... So, it's the hard squashes, like the winter squash. So, acorn squash, butternut squash, pumpkin... And we just found apple. And it turns out zucchini and apple... You can dehydrate all these things, grind them into a powder, and it's you can replace one third of that so if your recipe calls for three cups you can use one of those cups of like zucchini flour they say is the best because it has the least taste yeah and i've had zucchini bread in the past and i loved it you don't even taste the zucchini really so yeah you don't. and it, so you're saying if flour starting to get low and expensive and hard to find you can cut the flour with something you can grow you like can zucchini zucchini is easy yep. to grow apples and apples you can dry them out, and they will not take over the flavor that much. Um, especially, I had heard good things about zucchini. I think apples does give it a little sweet, but sometimes I want that in my bread. I wouldn't I, mind apple. I mean, we actually make a lot of quick breads, like banana yeah. bread and pumpkin bread. And... Uh, for people who don't cook, what's a quick bread? A quick bread is something you don't use yeast in to rise, so it cooks very... So kind of like the... I mean, it doesn't bake any quicker, really, but it's way quicker to make. And they, so there's no yeast in it. And these are the things that mainly people are familiar with. That, like muffins. Uh, that buy a box ready to go. Those yep. are almost all quick breads, right? Yep. Okay. Um, we are now going to talk about how to save money on your cell phone. Now, I discovered something a while back, and it's not a big secret, but a lot of people overlook it. Um, so what happened was most of the time where we live, Verizon's the best network. They have the best coverage, the fastest stuff, and they're the most expensive. But there are other wholesalers of their service that go around and they will sell their service, which uses Verizon towers. And what normally happens is when you have a cell phone and... You have a plan. And you have a plan. You're locked into some super expensive phone. So you've got data caps. So the you, expensive phone. Yeah, you want the new expensive phone, which costs $1,200. So they will do a thing and be like, you get a free phone. But what they do is they just subsidize it and jack your monthly payment up. And you buy it back and at $1,200. More than $1,200. And... But you're just spacing it up over a year and a half so it doesn't hurt as bad. Yep. Um, and you will have data restrictions. So when you try to use your phone... It'll say it's unlimited, but it's not. It's unlimited up to like 5 gigs, and then it, and then it throttles drops. it down. You get the throttled which means they slow it down so much that it's unbearable to use. Um, so the big problem was for people like in RVs and preppers and people that wanted to be on the move, they couldn't find a phone that was truly unlimited data 
that doesn't uh, throttle you and slow you down after so much. And we found a service called Visible. And Visible not only gives you completely unlimited everything. And we tested it. And we tested it because... Um, we used over a terabyte of data in one month. A terabyte of data and it never slowed. And now you can use your phone to hotspot. And we actually used it as our house internet when we travel. And out at the homestead and stuff. It's our house internet. And get this, if you set everything up right, it's only $25 a month for everything. Um, now there's some, some loopholes you got to do to get to that. You have to join um, a group. And what we'll do is we'll put a link up here if you follow it through. And that link, um, they have like a family plan, it's called. It's where a party plan. It's a party plan. And the thing is, is you don't actually have to be related or know these people or you don't share any private information. You don't share any your billing information. You just have, like that. what they use you for is an advertising arm to tell other people. So if you tell three other people that come in with you, the price goes from $40 a month the next 35. person's 35, the next 30. person's 30, and then finally it goes down to 25. Well, a long time ago, we have like, what, like 12 people in our group? Yeah. And everybody gets 25 bucks because they join through that link. And it's for, as far as I know, for good. Until, I mean, that hasn't hit with inflation. I'm still paying $25. Less, um, actually, because less. right now they have that thing where if you sign up through... Yeah, if you follow our link, they'll give you a month for free. I think, or no, it's, you it's get like five bucks. A month for five dollars, we get a month for five dollars, and yeah. then. So just follow the link, and you'll even get your first month for just five bucks, and then after that's twenty-five bucks. Um, visible, if you rig it right, there are ways that you can use it as a hotspot. You hotspot it to a router, and then what happens is you can use that as your house internet because it's on throttle. Now, the downside is you are sharing a tower. It is cell phone, so if you were doing this near a really crowded city. We live um, in a touristy area right now, and when the tourists come, that it's data off. service slows to it's slow. it suck. But it's everybody's but service. Everybody's trying to split one tower. Um, but once the tourists leave that night, around 8 o'clock, all of a sudden the internet works good, and, you know. And, I mean, it's the hotspot is good enough that you can game on. Yeah, I've been able to play video games. I've been so able to we surf, have a, watch Netflix. You gaming, my son gaming. You guys both streaming. And yeah, and then both of me and the All that on a $25 cell phone. So if you were t don't use the internet a lot, you could get rid of your home internet and just run it off this phone service. And your phone bill and internet combined would be 25 bucks. I mean, that's a steal. Um, now, Visible doesn't take every single phone. You'll have to get on their website and look. But if they, they don't take you your list. phone, you can, go to the yeah, you can bring your own phone for most phones. But if they don't, they have cheapy phones that are like 80 bucks that we bought, and they're great. I mean, they're pretty good for they 80 last bucks. for what you need. Yeah. I mean, if you're a phone snob who wants the new iPhone that's $1,300, well, They've got they have too. those too, but th then you're probably not watching this. If you're spending $1,300 <laughs> on a phone, Your priorities mean you got to have the, a talk. Yeah. Our priorities are not the same. <laughs> I don't know what the heck a $1,300 phone does so much better than my phone. Well, mine can take pictures. Mine can watch videos. Mine can stream. I'm offended at the thought of spending $1,300 in my lifetime on phones. Yeah, like, <laughs> what does a $1,300 phone look like? Oh, I can do and why 3D you need a panoramic phone or something. Every year. I don't understand that mentality. Maybe you can explain that. Okay, another good defense thing is delivery services. And we didn't realize this at first, how much money this saved us. Now, what we use is, believe me, we hate Walmart but we use them because it's a necessary evil to get what we need at the cheapest prices right now to get ready for the collapse. And also they have a really good deal where it's like, so even if you do it monthly, it's like twelve ninety nine a month and they will deliver your stuff for free unless you want it in like the next hour and then it's like a $10 fee. But plan ahead. Everything about what we're talking about is planning ahead anyway. And if you buy it by the year, it's cheaper, right? Yeah, I think it's like, like eight bucks a month or something, or eight or nine bucks. Yeah, I think it's like seven ninety. So for like eight bucks a month, someone will bring you your groceries to your doorstep, and it—I mean, I'm amazed. Like we'll order something, and it shows up an hour or two later. Sometimes, you know, it's amazing how fast this this happens. I usually order stuff that night. I'll order it at night before we go to bed, and then it's there in the morning. Now, if you add up 
that say you're shopping a lot and you're picking up fresh produce and you're stockpiling, you're slowly buying stuff that's disappearing and reappearing and, and it's trying to buy sales. It's it's like a full time job to it's ex- and going to Walmart is sitting, always just a nightmare. It is like, soul it sucking. Is not- it's soul sucking. The energy's terrible. The people are pissed off working there. The people you are angry working there. You have to find everything. You have the to get, energies... find somebody to get the thing <sighs> off the top shelf because nothing is stock. It's just a horrible and, experience yeah, we're, altogether. We're spiritual people and we're empaths and we just pick up on energy all over the place. And like going in that place is is we are physically exhausted when we walk out of there. Yeah, we usually have to come home and lay down. So avoiding ever having to do that again. Is worth the eight the, bucks a month. The eight bucks, but the bonuses we get. <laughs> let's talk about we get bonuses for incompetence, um, and what I mean by that is they screw her order up all the time, and we'll give her double orders and extra stuff, and and so and they're just I started like feeling guilty we're like, about it. Yeah, should we return it? So and, I call, I go on the chat to ask like what am I supposed to do, and they're like we can't take it back because of the thing, the thing, the thing that we cannot say. So just keep it. It's our gift to you. <laughs> And Sorry for the inconvenience is usually what I get. Yeah, inconvenience. We got double, like, we ordered SOS pads, and we got an entire box of SOS pads because they sent them, like, three times. I ordered four boxes and got 12. 12, yeah, three times the amount. And let's talk about one other thing they do. If you order something online, like we'll order rice, if they do not have the ghetto cheap brand, they automatically go up to the higher brand. So there's a thing you can, and I learned this right off the bat because we order vegan food. So I do not want them to replace my Gardein's, you know, yeah. crumbles with actual ground beef. So those, you have the option of, oh, will you take a substitution, will you not? But I always get, like, the Walmart canned corn. 50% of the time, they don't have enough to make the order, and they just upgrade you to a name brand. Yeah, you get Dole or something. And that's that's a really... So we quickly make back the $7 just on upgrades. I mean, they're, like, one order. There was, like... And the deliveries are not good. The people that are delivering... They're either overworked or they're just, or they're just not, brand new and they they're just know. disorganized and we end up with extra bags. And a lot of the time I have this stuff delivered when we're not here. Yeah. And we call it like an incompetence bonus that somebody screws up the order and gives us a bunch of stuff. And then we call them and they're like, do you want this back? And they're like, nope, just throw it out. And we're like, no, we're not throwing this out. We're just going to keep this extra stuff. Keep it there. as a gift. They send you know, it to, or feel free just, to use it. We've got other throw people's Throw it away, stuff. use it, or donate it. Yeah, Your choice. They've screwed up and given us other people's stuff. And we'll be like, and then the other person has to get it all again, and they ship it out to them, and Walmart eats the bill. They're like, we can't take it back. It's food. Yep, we don't so care. So it just ends up being a It's bonus. not worth our time to come so get it. So delivery services are worth it. And it is totally worth it. There's one other big bonus besides saving hours of time. Gas. Energy, and now gas is stupid. So if you're going back and forth between shopping two or three times a week, um, that's a lot of gas, believe it or not. It adds up quick. At these prices, so just that alone—that's depending I on how far away a Walmart is from you. you we're know, saving like, the seven, eight dollars, whatever it costs a month, probably just in gas. You know, because ours is so. ours takes about ten minutes to get to, so ten minutes back and forth in the truck. Uh, you know. Well, and there's a lot of times like we there we have hard rules about when we shop. Like there are certain times and days that we just won't go. Yeah, not gonna go during the weekends. With, so. That limits, you know, we have to do a lot of planning ahead. This negates that. Like, or if I forgot something. Yeah. Now it's easy. Um, okay. Some other stuff we're going to talk about. Entertainment. There are, I want to say, first of all, talk to your friends about streaming services. You're allowed to pretty much share streaming services, at least as far as I know, um, like, if someone has a Netflix account, you probably already know this because you probably ride on... Like, if you have Netflix... Your friend's Netflix account. And but, your roommate has... But a group of us got together, and we all share everything. So one guy has Hulu, one person has Paramount, one person has uh, Peacock. And we just share the passwords, and all of us have everything now. So for, like, 15 20 bucks, you know, I, I think I have the most expensive thing is the, the premium Netflix. Um, everybody's sharing everything stuff, and... For 15 20 bucks and a visible phone, you have all the entertainment you could ever stream. You know, uh, it's insane. That takes care you of don't your need phone, TV takes anymore. care of your internet. Now, if 
you're using it as your house internet and you're somebody that leaves the house a lot and takes the phone with you, that could be a problem. But for another for another twenty five bucks you can I mean set internet's pretty phone. much fifty bucks everywhere else. Yeah, you could actually dedicate a phone to just stay at the house, just buy an extra twenty five dollars a month phone and use that as a a set internet. The um, other thing you can do is get free ebooks. So say, okay, I don't watch TV. A lot of home sitters are like, I don't want to watch TV, and I'm also planning for not having electricity much. Okay, so you can get a, either um, a, a Kindle that runs, you know, just on battery or something, a, a e-reader or books. You can still go to the library for free. A lot of people forget they have books. But the other thing that I, I didn't know about is because I haven't been in the library in years, the library will actually. You download this app and they let you have audiobooks for free. They stream audiobooks to you and you can sit and, and e-books. listen in ebooks. Um, so it's a free way to entertain yourself and your kids. You can go through, you can save so much money on like kids' books and stuff. But it's electronic, so you might have to cough up, uh, well, you could read it on your phone. If you already have a, a, a phone, you yeah. can That's what we put those apps on. But if you with want to. With the kids like, when they were little. But you know, the Kindle, like that. The library was the best thing ever. It's. They have come down so much in price, though. Well, you know, they rent movies and video games at the library now, too. I forgot about that, too. Yeah. I, if you haven't checked out the library in, like, 20 years, there's lots of cool stuff it does. But, and you're already forced to pay for it, the, so why not uh, use the it? the one in Ohio did all kinds of activities and stuff, too. Yeah, I mean... Free. It's all... They're stealing your tax dollars for it, so use but it. But they have, like, knitting classes and painting classes and crafting and all kinds of stuff. So what happens, um, I was saying, is you can buy refurbished stuff. Um, you could get a, I was looking at tablets for like 50 bucks now. Yeah, they're cheap. 50 bucks, like kid tablets that are refurbished, and you'll have all the free entertainment you want. Um, and your kid can beat the heck out of it, and you lost only 50 bucks, and not a $1,300 iPhone. Um, all right. There's also... Um, Bargains, like, uh, there's a lot of channels you can follow on YouTube for people that have bargains. Like, there's that one deal guy or something that he's always reviewing what sales are going on, this and that. Now, you're going to feel like, unfortunately, you can't have things both ways. You either work and make more money and pay for this stuff, or you're going to work, take time, and learn how to run a good defense. But once you kind of figure out what you're looking for, it gets faster and faster. But there are some days where Laurel and I will sit online and look at deals for like two or three hours. You know, just find out what, it's like a what all the sales are, clip the coupons. Yeah, it's like clipping you know. coupons. Um, so there is a price to this, and again, it comes down to how much free time versus how much money you have. If you have enough money, then you have more, you know, you have more free time. Uh, sorry, you have more money, you probably have less free time, uh, and you'll just pay for the convenience of getting what you want right away. If you have less money and more free time, then you act like it's a job and start working the coupons and the sales. Um, so there's lots of good channels on YouTube. You just got to search around and sign up for those, and they will alert you whenever there's a crazy deal going on. The next thing is, if you're trying to save money on produce, go to your local grocery stores like Food Lion, uh, Kroger, Safeway. Safeway. Uh, those guys bring people in by doing, like you'll never Weekly really specials. seal... Compared to Walmart, you'll almost never see much sale of produce in Walmart. But every once in a while, Food Line will have like... 99 cent, 10 pound bag of potatoes. Yeah, we found a $2... That's right, at Food Line. And this was pretty recent. 10 pound bags of potatoes for 2 bucks. And the sweet potatoes that were 19 cents a pound or... Yeah, the 39 cent a pound. It was 39 cents. Yeah, last year was 19 cents. So those are worth checking out for produce because you will not see those at the box stores. You'll have to go to the locals, and every once in a while, man, we will kill it. We'll buy a ton of sweet potatoes. Well, and sweet potatoes, here's the thing. We got those in Thanksgiving. They're still perfectly fine. I think I have three of them that are have the sprouts. Yeah, and we're going to probably plant a bunch to see if they're any good. Yeah, they didn't look treated. So, because for that price... Because it's only it's not it's worth, seasonal. And it's, it's only seasonal. for Thanksgiving. They're just dumping it for Thanksgiving, but people don't realize sweet potatoes, if you put them in that, like an air-conditioned house, they last five, six months. Um, so... Go to your local food line and stuff like that for for that. And when when you check the find, weekly ads online. And we I keep reiterating this. When you find sales, you need to buy hard. So set a certain part of your budget as a buy hard budget. So you know you spend three hundred dollars of groceries a week or so, I mean a month or something or whatever your budget is. I don't know how big your family is, 
But part of that portion should be, okay, this is floating money. And when I see these two for one buys on the cans of soup we like, we buy them all. And you need to buy hard when you see those sales, especially right now, like we were talking about in the beginning of the show. If you see your favorite things and they haven't been marked up, buy them all now because once they restock, they will be marked up. So the thing about the, like the processed foods, the instant meals and stuff, if you are, if your budget for your family is five, six hundred dollars a month and that's all you're buying, that's all you're buying. Like it's so expensive that yeah, processed foods you're not going expensive. to get anything past that. So we cook, so all of, like we have that same budget. With that same budget, if you cook your meals, then you have a good half of that left over to stock up. Oh, that's a, that's a great it's point. It's only the if processed stuff it's the, that's expensive. It really is, because we will get the hankering to get some junk food once in a while. We'll be like, hey, man, I want vegan corn dogs. And they're like six bucks, you know, four bucks a pack, four bucks a pack. So we're spending they're like a dollar a piece $10 and, yeah. to, for us to eat a little junk food. And that is a special occasion treat. That is not our standing. We're eating Oh, it yeah, all the my time. birthday when we went yeah. out, it was like $90 just for junk food. And, and it was ridiculous. But. If I had, we could buy 90 bucks of junk food at a store, or I could take you to one sit-down restaurant and it would, a for meal. $100, and you would get one meal out of it, where this we ate for a few days. Yeah, it was like four or five days of junk yeah. food. Again, go back to learn to cook. Um, and if you're going not to learn to cook, learn how to buy processed food that's healthy, that's cheap. Don't buy the crappy, crappy processed food. You'll give yourself diabetes. All right. Um, the other like thing, stomach ulcer. you want to learn. Yeah, I mean your immune system is important right now. Don't feed yourself that. Anything with high fructose corn syrup, do not eat it. Speaking of that, let's talk about buying drinks. A lot of people, um, and I don't know how this happened. I guess it's just you're raised drinking this stuff, and it's kind of like an addiction. It becomes a lot of people won't drink water. I'll be like, go home and just drink water. What do you got to drink? Water. What do you mean? What else? Water. So we do... Maybe hot tea is cheap still. You can maybe it is. buy hot tea. Hot is tea. Cheap. Even coffee isn't that expensive, but then all the stuff yeah. you put in it is. So... And and it's also, you know, it's not good for your adrenal glands. It's not good for you. You, you need to start working on your health for what's coming. You want to start getting and off all these the, stimulants the and The thing is, coffee and... is a very important item. It's not like we That's grow that here. That's another thing. There's not many people so who grow So just coffee. like meds grow up, you need to wean off things that are really going to make you sick. I did. I quit. As soon as 2020 started going all crazy, I dumped coffee. And it's hard, but it only takes about, what, about a month before you're craving water. Once you get the, uh, the caffeine addictions out of your brain, and you will be shocked how much money you save if you stop buying drinks. And you will be a lot happier if you choose to do it now. Yeah, than then, being forced to do it in a high stress situation. Because I forgot about that during the uh, the the freak out last year, people all bought the drinks right off the. There was no Gatorade. There was there's no still, sodas. I think they still. I saw a video people the other day buying, of people still saying that there's like none buying of that. bottled water, which is crazy. If you're buying bottled water, I want to just we need to have a talk because you need to be buying a filter. There is Fizzle Life sells a filter for like 130 bucks, and it's more water than you, you can use it for over a year. Filtered awesome water, even takes the fluoride out of the water. Um, I'll link it below, affiliate link below. <laughs> <laughs> God, I got a lot of things I gotta link. I'm gonna forget half these things. If I forget an affiliate link, just ask for it in the description. Um, but yeah, you're crazy to not be filtering your water. It's so much cheaper. It's way cheaper. So much cheaper. It's a and hard plus investment you're not up front. drinking water that sat in plastic. Well, the problem was a few years ago, the reverse osmosis and things like that, they were like five hundred dollars. Oh, it was ridiculous. But like, now they've got good systems. Well, for remember, under like a Berkey bucks. was a thing of like oh luxury, like your like your, your wildest your dreams. Rich you friend know, has like... a Berkey, right? Um, and they're still expensive, and they're worth it uh, to an extent. But if you're going on a budget, look at something like Fizzle Life. They're they're way cheaper. Frizzle. Frizzle life? Frizz. Fizz? I, I don't know. I'll find it. I'll link it. Uh, so get yourself a water filter. Stop screwing around and stop drinking sodas and coffee and cow boob juice and all the whatever. You know, like everything that costs money that's a drink you don't really need. You don't. We don't. I mean, get used to drinking water. You'll save a ton of money. 
If you can't do that, then swap it out with one meal. Be like, okay, at lunch I will have water. Like oh. honestly, I think the oat milk is probably the cheapest. It's in the store, the store bought stuff is a, it's way more expensive okay. than like almond milk. But I think if you were making it yourself, yeah, oats like you, it's that is an excellent point. If you want, it's like half a cup of oats. <laughs> if you want some sort of milk, you can make oat milk, which is delicious, by the way. It tastes really we close love oat milk. to real same. But you can actually make oat milk way cheaper. And there's lots of ways you can look it up. On I'm getting ready. YouTube. We have that. We have we actually invested in an uh, oh god I forgot what it's called the nut the I, nutter I, I, I don't know affiliate link below <laughs> the, uh, Nutri milk Nutri milk we actually bought a pretty pricey milk machine but once we did the math we realized this thing would pay for itself in about four months for what we and it buying. also has like a nut butter attachment and, and you could you could do anything in it now that's an overkill but that is an investment for us because if we make our own plant milks that's way way cheaper than buying them way, way cheaper, cheaper and way higher quality like you would be amazed at how little almonds are in your almond milk yeah l not much in, in i oats think it's and, like eight almonds for and plus milk. don't forget they put a bunch of chemicals in there that you don't need like you don't and need added oil and all kinds of stuff and it's more delicious to make it yourself it's fresh there's oil like in the oats you know i mean so get yourself, um, now if you don't have all that expensive because you're here to save money, you're not going to go spend a bunch of money on a, a Nutri milk machine unless you're just really like but if us you're that really, drink a lot. So if you're cooking for yourself, you have a little bit of extra money. You, there are appliances that make your life a lot easier, and I would say a high-speed blender would be the number yeah. one. Yeah, the blender, that's what we were, I was just about to go to. You can make these things in a blender. Just go on YouTube, and there's lots of different ways to make these cheaply. Are they as good as the Nutri milk? No, but... Because it's a difference and not between. It's easy because the Nutri milk you don't have yeah, to. Yeah, the Nutri milk uh, cuts it up and it's. It, it blends it's in and the you fluid. don't have to use the. You don't have the to use a, um, a bag and that... squeeze it out. Because really what you're drinking is like nut water. You're not drinking the actual nuts or anything. It's just nut water. But this grinds it up so much and solidifies it, you don't even. Yeah, they said the oat milk's like super ultra creamy. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Anyway, enough about that great product. Um, there's cheap ways to do that because you're here to learn about bargains and make your own drinks. Uh, There's always a cheap way of doing things. If you I really can can't stand water, water, tea. Tea is really cheap. Tea, and you can grow all the stuff to make teas. Yeah, actually, there you go. So I invested in um, stocked up in black tea because I don't know if we can grow that. I don't know. I don't even know where black tea comes from. Probably. I'm I mean, not maybe. sure either. So I stocked up on a whole bunch of that, but like I can. Add all the extra. So Lorelai, we don't really drink much tea, but Lorelai uses it for medicine. Whenever you get a burn or a bug, tea bags are the best. They're the best, man. It's a, like it didn't even happen. It's amazing. Yeah. I got burned and she. What witchcraft is this? It was crazy. <laughs> there wasn't even a scar, but you got to do it like immediately, pretty much. You but it takes it right and it makes it stop hurting too. Like it's yeah. gone. Black tea bags kick butt for for medical stuff too. Yep, for sure. And speaking of medicines, start weaning off your medicines um, that you are paying for. Obviously, it's not good because we've talked about this before. As well, the shipping, start weaning off all of them anyway. as the shipping starts going, and a lot of people don't realize that most of their stuff is made overseas. Most of the pharmaceuticals, uh, they are going to start getting harder and harder. And you're already seeing that. Some people, some pharmacies are out and out for a while. So you're going to have to make your medicine go longer, and you're going to have to get used to it. Now, obviously, don't do something dangerous because someone's going to be like, "Oh, I used to, have to cut your medicine, and now you no, know." No, start talking. Talk, talk to your, your doctor. Talk to your put doctor you on. about it, and tell them what the situation is. Hey, there's some bad times coming. I want to get down to the smallest dose I can so I can save money, and I'd like to eventually get off it. I think people forget that it is their right to get off these. Yeah, you can bargain. Like, your doctor isn't the end-all be-all. Wean off the meds. And the other ones that where you really get killed are the over-counter stuff. Like if you're just taking allergy pills and stuff like that, a lot of that is diet and uh, chiropractic helps that a lot too. If you can go to a chiropractor a few times, you can pretty much get off a lot of allergy stuff, especially um, over the a counter. A lot of hay fever stuff, yeah. grass allergies, plant allergies um, can be solved Those with nettles. Nettles, yeah. There's Nettle all kinds capsules. of, there's all kind of natural products that are cheap. It helps heal whatever. But start wrong. start but trying diet to figure is a out. Big one. Yeah, I mean, you'll be like, oh, I take you know three allergy pills a day. Well, that's not a great way to live, you know, and you're spending a ton of money. No, I and there's side effects. That stuff is really bad. You know, yeah. find a better way to do that. Um, as far as pet food goes, people are freaking out about pet food, 
And a lot of people have fed their pets only pet food that comes from a bag. Like their pets have never eaten any table scraps or human food. And they don't want to cause their pets to beg. And the way to handle that is you just make the food in the bowl when the pet's not around and put it down for them just like it was. I think it's the act of actually handing a pet food that makes them beg. Yeah, that's what I was yelling at you about. Yeah, you're the dog. Stuff, you know, Stop put it mindlessly in bowl. feeding her. Yeah, if we put it in a bowl, she stops begging. So a way to save money on pet food is to start feeding them your food. Now, cats, it's a little more difficult because you're going to have to... They're true carnivores where they need some sort of meat, um, but you couldn't get away with things like eggs and stuff like that so. and, and leftover, your leftovers. Um, dogs are way easier. A lot of people don't realize dogs don't actually need meat and they can still be very healthy. Um, and you can cut their meat way, way back and, and put like, you know, rice and potatoes and whatever you're Sweet feeding potatoes. Them. Sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes really and brown, or sweet potatoes and white rice. Brown rice doesn't really do so them any favors. Start cutting your dog food with vegetables and you'll save a lot of money. Actually, rice and beans. She loves Yeah, she loves beans. <laughs> like rice and beans. So our dog eats whatever we eat. We don't even buy dog food really unless we're traveling. We have it for traveling and for... A lot more lately just because it's been, we've been back and forth. And so a lot of stuff that we would normally put in a compost, I'll cut it up and give it to her as long as it's not rotten. Yeah. So like the tops of tomatoes, I might when cut around When you're juicing it. or yeah. when I'm uh, like the, yes, you know, tomatoes the especially. Stuff, you can cut it up and give it to your pets and that, that makes it go a lot further. So you can kind of harvest some of your compound, so your compost. Dogs are a lot like people. They need a lot of veggies. And a lot of variety. But there are some things you can't feed them like grapes and raisins. Yeah. Super toxic, you know. Go easy on the onions. Cucumbers. Don't feed your dog a ton of cucumbers. We learned Why that hard we do lesson. that? Because I was eating a ton of cucumbers. So I was, this we were eating cucumbers every morning. Horrible mistake. So I was trying to lose weight, and I was eating cucumbers a lot more. I was trying to up my vegetable game. And I don't trust the pesticides on there, so I shave all the skins off. And I wash it, of course. I try to give it, but the dog would always want a little bit, so I'd throw her some. She loves cucumbers. But I didn't realize the skins... Or, or a diuretic. Hardcore diuretic. So she started peeing all over the house, and we were like, what is wrong with this dog? And it was our fault. I was feeding her cucumbers. And so now she either gets a slice or two of cucumber that it doesn't have skin on it. Yeah, she can have that. It's fine. And it doesn't seem to set her off, but I don't give her but a But yeah, now we're really leery about giving her cucumbers. <laughs> Learn that lesson. Okay, let's talk about the next thing. Um, learn how to make soaps and wet wipes and that sort of stuff. This is a, a something that we are kind of weak on. I, we're trying to learn this ourselves, but... We're trying to learn what works for us. Um, for, yeah. We, for soap, we looked into it, and it was cheaper for us to buy Castile soap in bulk. We bought large things of Castile soap, because a lot of so people... So we have several gallons Have you ever that. seen the Dr. Bromer's things? Those are super expensive, but they last a while. And the way we get those to go further when we buy Castile soap is we bought the off-brand. So, like... You know, it's Walmart will unscented. sell it, or the food line sells it. Oh, yeah, I got the... For five bucks less. So you get that, and then you put the large bulk soap into small bottles, and you water it down. Yep. And that seems to work really well, actually. I like it better watered down. I do, too. So it makes it go even further because we cut it with water and use it for everything. It's actually easier to, like, wash and with, too. We like Castile soap because it doesn't wreck the pipes. It works on every part of the body. It you doesn't can... dry your skin out. And like you can we use, can use it, it in for, your hair. We can use it for shampoo if we have to. Yeah, use it in your hair, and you can also use it for cleaning products. You can cut it in different varieties, and you can use it to wash clothes. You can wash it to uh, use it. So it's it's like one soap that rules them all. It's like the ring in Lord of the Rings. It's the one soap that binds the others. Mm -hmm. And you can use it for everything. And if you buy it in bulk containers, they're like gallon. They're they're kind of expensive. They're and 40, it 50 have bucks, the but it goes that a long make way. Us go crazy. Like, we're both super sensitive to chemicals. Now, there's much cheaper ways to do it. You can make your own soaps. Um, but, again, buying the soap supplies and stuff well, is so kind it's of not an cheap, investment. Though. It's... Well, people make really fancy soaps. But if you want to make, like, the cheap if... soaps. But people make their own laundry detergent that's way cheaper. Laundry detergent is. But if we're way doing, cheaper. like, soaps, you need, like, olive oil or coconut oil. Yeah. And so it's... it starts getting expensive. And then, again, we watch for buys on this, too. Because yeah. I'm not completely against bars. But if the price comes up and it's like, hey, two for one on these bars and there's not a bunch of chemicals in it, we pick them up. Um, so, you know, Although I will own. say that the shampoo bars, that shampoo bar was $9. And it lasted three of us. 
Yeah, with long hair. You like your hair? My hair would soak some shampoo up. But the thing is, you don't have to hardly ever wash it either. Like, yeah, this it, is another misconception. It's really strange. Like, and we don't. None of us wear deodorant. I haven't worn deodorant in years. And you're like, how do you not wear deodorant? I shower a lot, and I don't eat a lot of. Well, again, people are gonna get mad about saying this. When we I was eating eat, meat and dairy, that's I smelt like meat and dairy. Fried crab. And if I was eating fried food, I smelt like fried food, and it would come out through the skin. So most American diets. You're just like this toxic dumping ground out of your armpits. Because and it's just purging. You smell. Um, when I switch to all vegetable diet and I try to avoid processed foods, um, also I shave my armpits because the bacteria sets up on the hair. If you shave your armpits and you don't eat processed food or meat or dairy, you don't smell at all. Like when I sweat, I don't stink. I just get wet. No, there was one day you came in and like you were soaked from working and I was like, oh my God, he is going to smell so bad. And you walked by and I was like, that is just not fair. Yeah. When you no, get like, your, but you don't when you get your pH right and your body right. You don't stay. Although it, but it, it gives you a good hint too. Like if you start to smell, you know, your, yeah, diet, your diet sucks. It's time to clean up. So your smell is basically your diet and, um, and hair. Because when we're eating junk food. I, will I smell smelled it. myself. <laughs> like, mm, yeah. it's time to. You get gamey. And then um, for me, it's if I don't show you my armpit hair. If I let it go for a while, that's when it starts to stink. The bacteria will start setting up. I can see that. Because the bacteria on the hair is what actually causes the odor. It's eating. So if you don't give them a place to live, you don't stink as much. I can see that. That's one reason you stink. But the other is basically because you eat greasy fried food and junk food. Meat and dairy, you smell like, you smell like cheese. So, don't eat that stuff, and you'll, you can get off uh, deodorant completely. If you can't make that sacrifice, you can get natural deodorants at work. Deodorants are dangerous. When but, I was younger, I had some really bad. Well, you want one that Actually, lets you sweat. And, and my you don't sister want did the, too. She you don't want any huge, She had huge um, abscesses. Yeah, they link. They link deodorant. it to. Uh, Breast cancer and stuff, they have a, they think it's linked to breast cancer. Is, you know, you're blocking sweat from getting out of that area. It has nowhere yeah, to go. Yeah, I never understood that. That was a big thing in the 80s. Mm -hmm. Remember the spray on yeah. antiperspiring? Like, because you don't, you don't want to be embarrassed. You don't want to be in high school and have these huge sweat paint, you know. But again, because they used to make us run in our clothes. Oh, yeah. You know, and go to gym. and. But again, and everybody stank because yeah, everybody stank of, like, the school ate, diet was we not ate school impressive. Food that was one step up from prison food. It was pretty much prison food. It was pretty much prison yeah. food. So, um, let's see. The Making... hot dogs with the green line. And my friend Brenda, if you have not seen Brenda's channel, go check it out. She is at the Pop-Up Homestead on YouTube. She is super nice, and I love their videos. They're great. Her and her husband put them up. She they um, have a lot of good ideas. Yeah, a lot of good ideas. Check out her channel, Sue, for how to save some money. And uh, our friend Deanne. Oh, oh, so we have a Telegram group. And what that is, if you don't have Telegram, is it's a messaging app. It's free. It's safe. It's fairly anonymous. I mean, it's... Nothing's uh, anonymous. Nothing's but... really... It's it's way better than Facebook or Instagram or any of those the ones that spy on you and sell your info. So it doesn't really quite do that. It's not perfect, but it's way better. Telegram, uh, we have a group over there where we all talk. Us homesteaders get together and want to be homesteaders and... Uh, we trade ideas and one of them came up from our buddy Deanna and she was saying uh, that she cuts up uh, well help me out coffee filters that yeah. some reason buying stacks of coffee filters goes a lot further and it's way cheaper than actually buying paper towels she was using them as paper towels and catch-alls and some people I think uh, I think it might have been uh, someone was talking about how they use them for coffee filters Oh, and coffee filters you can use to make tea. To tea. tea yeah, bags. they were making them for tea. So they were like a multi-purpose thing. And when she priced it out, it was way cheaper than actually buying paper towels. She was using I've used them for a lot of and things. And toilet paper, if you cut them in the squares. Uh, don't throw it down your toilet. You know, throw it like if you're at a... Most of these people are homesteaders, so they have composting toilets where they throw the paper somewhere else. You know, like in a, a basket or whatever. So treat it like it's a non-flushable, but it's a lot cheaper. I'm sorry, what were you saying? I said, I've used coffee filters for lots of things. Crafts yeah. mostly, but... I didn't know they are so useful. Um, they're really good for, like, if you're making homemade teas. Makes sense. That you want to, like, give out as gifts or whatever, it's easy just to put them in. 
yeah. to copy filters. They're and they're inexpensive. You get like two hundred for. It used to be like five hundred for a dollar, but now I don't. Know. And there's also like Barbara was saying, there's cheap ways to make wet wipes. And that saves a lot of money too, and you can find all that stuff on YouTube. Um, this is something that was really kind of a surprise that I didn't realize. If you start eating a non-fat diet. Like we eat uh, mainly carbs and no, we try to go real low on the low fat. Um, we don't cook with oils if we can avoid it. And we don't cook with butter and we don't cook with, we, we just use really good nonstick pans. If you cut your oil out of your diet, um, your amount of soap and cleaning goes way down. Oh, your dish soap. Your so we've been using the same big soaps. bottle of Dawn dish soap for over a year. So the oil is the reason you use so much soap to get stuff clean and your personal body when you eat all that greasy food you will start making rings in the toilet and rings in the tub of like that soap scum ring around the, the soap scum ring that's from your oil that's not from anything else so when you stop eating all that oil it we don't away. have like... rings anymore like they just don't happen Unless it is funny because we'll have a friend who comes that's on like an oily diet and there will be, our bathroom looks like it'll be trashed. It'll be this ring and this gross. And I'm like, how the hell did that happen? You know, and it was After our guest. Like two days. Yeah, there's two a days, ring, there's a, a black a... ring around the show. I'm like, what? And it's the oil coming out of their body that rises up with the water and sticks to the sides and it sticks with the dirt. So as you go more, f and, and this is especially true in a grid down situation, eventually, you know, there's going to be no oil. You're going to eat it all and it's going to be gone. And the only kind you can really make here in the U.S. is probably peanut oil. Easy. Avocado oil. Um, I don't, <laughs> avocados don't, I mean, not many people seed I know oil. are growing. Seed and nut oils you can do. But they're difficult. It, the amount of processing and like, you know, you don't, a normal person cannot make corn oil. That takes a bunch of chemical processes. Yeah, to get I have no idea. Just pressed so seed oil. what's going to happen is it's going to be a cost benefit. You're going to say, I have to spend... An entire two days and a lot of my solar electricity to squeeze the oil out of these peanuts, or I can just eat the peanut. I'm gonna oh, say, you know what? I'm gonna, gonna cut get the all your you're gonna get all your your fats from <laughs> from nuts. Foods. Yeah. yeah. Now you can still get that stuff, but it's different when it's trapped in the fiber. When you're eating a peanut, is way different than drinking that with peanut oil. Oh yeah, I can. You know, if you, you know drink two tablespoons of avocado oil, it's way different than eating an avocado. avocado. So the fiber slows everything down and it, it just makes, so surprisingly, this is something I didn't realize, your cleaning time goes way down if you're not eating oil and your soap. Oh yeah, I used to have to spend hours scrubbing the tub. Yeah, and the soap but is, it, we don't barely go through any cleaning soap. Like most of vinegar. our meals, we can just wash off with water. I use our vinegar plates. in the, the bathroom. Yeah. Another way to save money is to play a good defense is stop traveling or only travel to free places or low cost places. Like and camping is, instead of hotel stays. Um, even camping is getting expensive, but camping, camping at your friends. Stay at your friends if you're going to go on vacation. You know, um, hey, we're going to go to the beach, but we're going to stay at my friend's house near the beach. You know, we're not going to get a hotel room. Uh, now the gas is going to it's going to cost me a thousand dollars to go up to East Coast. You know, in a big truck or something. If you're going to pull a camper, it's going to be. Twelve hundred dollars to go a thousand miles. You know, it's it's going to be so ridiculous. So more staycation. Type. So you that'll happen naturally too. But I'm still talking to people that are like, I'm going to travel the world, and we're going to Mexico next month, and we're going to go to we're Europe. We're going to take a cruise to the Bahamas. And like, we're... do you see what's going on? <laughs> like, are you crazy? Instead of spending that money on a vacation, buy food. Like, oh, we're going to take a European vacation. Go Are you insane? Camping. Do you know what's going on over there? Like, yeah, like, uh, it, it blows my mind that some people are just n not on this planet about this. So stop traveling, uh, spending money on traveling, and, and do closer things for free or at low cost. And, you know, camping's still really fun. And staying at a friend's house, uh, pretty cheap and really fun. You know, there's ways to do stuff. Yeah. You can buy attraction tickets cheaper. So we live in Myrtle Beach. It is a tourist town. A lot of people don't realize that if you come into this tourist town, you pay twice the price than we do. Uh, sometimes triple or quadruple, depending on what so the event is. If we have an ID that says we live in Myrtle Beach, like a license, when we buy a ticket at a local event, like uh, say we want to go see the Elvis impersonators, um, or, or like uh, the amusement park, we get a price that's way cheaper since we're a local than 
somebody that's coming in as a tourist. So if you have a friend that lives somewhere local, have them buy the tickets for you. It'll save you a fortune. If it's a big tourist area, you'll yeah. always get a better deal. Um, wow, we are covering a lot of our secrets. <laughs> okay, if you are dirt broke and you qualify, and sometimes you don't even have to be dirt broke during uh, the thing we're not allowed to talk about, food banks open their doors to everybody. It didn't matter. There wasn't an income <sighs> yeah, verification. During the, during the pandemic, they had... They, they Now, they're starting to close that back down, but there's still some out there that will allow you to go. Uh, it doesn't matter what what your income is on some of these places. And what's crazy is... Um, it's government food drops. The government food drops. The USDA gives huge amounts of food to certain food banks, and then they have so much they beg you to take it, and they don't even care if you're certified. Or, you know, they're just like, come get it. Uh, and here is a, we have drive through ones where you just wait in line and drive through. And drive through. There's and a lot of them do that. You can um, you can get those because the way I feel is, you know, the U.S. government created this problem. Uh, you're crazy not to take the food. It's like they're creating this inflation, and if they want to give you free food, go take it. Go take it. You're crazy not to. So um, there are certain food drops that are open to everybody where the USDA just gives out massive amounts of food, and you don't even have to show an ID. And they get to the point where they have so much food that they have to, they beg you to take crates and carts away uh, just so they have more room to take more. And you can, if you have no money and can get to a food bank, a certain kind, you got to kind of shop around. Um, but they have food banks and then they have food drops. They're two different things. The food drops are pretty much They're, they're anyway, usually right? a church volunteers to distribute them and down here anyway. And... It comes from the government. They distribute it. It's all volunteers, and you just drive through. Everybody's really nice, and they just load your car as you yeah. drive through. And I've seen massive amounts of food given And away. we went to one, and it was huge. Huge. And so it is a great way. And there were hundreds of cars there. They give you so much food you can't eat it and in a few weeks, and you can easily build a stockpile um, just off that stuff just because you can't eat it all. They give you so much. So, depending on your political views, food banks, um, the other thing, and a lot of people don't realize this one, and this was new to me, um, because I, I didn't know this as a man, but they have reusable menstruation pads. Yeah, that was... And it also... It used to be crazy expensive, and yeah, there's just kind like, of never thought about it again yeah. after that, because they were, like, really expensive, like $20 for two but now twenty dollars for six right uh, or eight no i think it's more than that i think it's 12. oh 10 20 bucks so they're under like almost two bucks each probably with inflation but they two last bucks each. for years and maybe we can link that too uh this you're gonna look at this and be like oh i don't want to reuse a pad but when these companies that make the tampons they start not being around and these things are not coming in because guess where they're produced most of them are overseas uh you're gonna all of a sudden find out what being on the rag means uh when people used to say you're on the rag that's because they literally were walking around with rags over their underwear and so this is a situation where why they're easy to get and they're cheap on amazon you could get enough reusable pads for the rest of your life now is this too personal? Can I talk about? No, I don't see why not. Okay, so our daughter has. We, we switched her over because we were worried that we wouldn't be able to. Also, stockpiling pads is stupid because they take like, up. It takes like, up a stupid. Like I tried like an entire at first, wall. And I was like, this is how. How are you? Can you stockpile enough? If we we can't get this stuff for two or three years, there's no there's no way we can stockpile that. It's so much waste of space. So we got them and tried them with the daughter, and she really liked them. And they are easy. They have charcoal in them. They absorb. There's no smell. And you just pretty much, uh, when you just wash them as regular clothes, right? Yep. And just go right in the laundry. It's no big deal at all. And so for spending like 100 bucks on reusables, you'll have enough until their adulthood. You know? like well, they... So I have a friend who's the one that showed me the brand that she liked. And she said that she'd had those for five years. And they were like, they still look the same. Yeah, they didn't. They're really well made, and they're surprisingly cheap right now. 
And so, they're really cute. There's lots of little patterns, so it's not... Great way to so save mm -hmm. money, and it saves your, your underwear too, right? Yep. Um, they also make, a lot of people don't realize this, they make uh, reusable diapers. And I know our people these days, um, most of them are, don't want to screw with cloth diapers because it's such a pain in the butt. But they're not like the safety pin nightmares that they used to be. It's just like quick Velcro. They're much easier. And so you Way might, easier. if you have kids or you're expecting kids or you have teenage kids you think that will bring home a baby during the next few years, you know, you have to think ahead. There's not much to do in the collapse. There's going to mm -hmm. be a lot of stress. Your kids are aging. They could come home with more kids. Um, you might want to, because you won't be able to get this stuff in a few years. It'll just be gone. People well, might be making, so but you're going to be tying sheets around not, yourself. Yeah, you, so if you don't know how to sew. Yeah, I mean, it, that's no joke. If you go back and look just in the 50s and 60s, it was just like, hey, extra old sheets and, and old, you know, yeah, uh, honestly, shirts. Yeah, I don't even were, know what they did. A lot of them just let their babies naked. I, I remember seeing they had just like a, a place they put their baby, and that's where it, put, it was like a dog. It was like, a, you know, you put them in a, a metal tin, they pee and poop in there, and you wash out the tin, spray, spray their butt, and you just don't let the baby wander around much. You know, it was like a crib. Well, and I know, like, like a dog I know what they did like back when, like before in like the 17 and 1800s. What they was, do then? It was just cloth diapers. But there was no, you know, we don't. They didn't have plastic pants. You have plastic yeah. pants now. They just rope them, right? And they, they just, just um, a pin. Well, it was. I think they tied them. They might have figured out a way a to button, tie them. I think yeah. maybe a button. But um, oh, the buttons, yeah. They just and they just kind of peed everywhere when it was full. It was full, and you changed it, and you just pretty much always had pee on you. So like this is a thing you might want to consider now, and they still haven't really gone up with inflation yet. The pads are pretty much about the same price in the diapers. They, I, I've heard a rumor they make cloth diapers for adults. Uh, you might be able to do that if you're a skinny enough adult. You might, you know, if your grandmother's frail and she's skinny, she might be able to get into a large toddler's. You know, you don't really know. Uh, how that works, but I would consider adult too because you're talking about a grid down situation with your parents aging out and they're losing bladder control and losing control and you have nothing for them. So how do you deal with that? And the answers are, you know, making cloth diapers or save every piece of cloth. Don't donate anything anymore. You know, all your old t-shirts you give away and all that stuff. Well, so, I was going to, you know, we have all these clothes that like, I lost a bunch of weight, well, so I have all these and... clothes, you have a clothes, kids have clothes, so... I was yeah. like, but we could end up with people coming to stay with us that don't have anything. That don't have clothes or don't have, or have babies or, you know... And then a lot of that, fabric. so, and I was looking at the, you know, just the fabric alone for them. So, these don't fit me anymore, but it's not like I need more... I didn't get bigger, I got smaller, so I can always cut them down to fit. Yeah. That's another thing. Get a basic sewing kit. They're cheap, and they're going to be hard to get in the future. Get some show I mean, even if you don't really have much skill in sewing, you can still kind of do a patch job of fixing clothes and Oh, yeah, I got, like, what was it, like a hundred pack of crafting and sewing needles at the Dollar Tree. Yeah, they have them at the Dollar Tree. Uh, speaking of the Dollar Tree, so oh. the Dollar Tree used to be a great place to buy a few things, and we're going to show you our favorites that... Even though it's now the dollar twenty-five tree, which I'm completely offended to go in there, they still kill it on a few deals. And let me show you which ones. There's some frozen food. They used to have egg rolls that were ten for a dollar. Or sorry, they were vegetable spring rolls. Yeah. Vegetable spring rolls, ten for a dollar. Jennifer's brand. I haven't seen them in a while, but those were always one of our favorite buys. Because I mean, ten egg rolls for a dollar. Sorry, spring rolls for a dollar. Ridiculous. They were yeah, and they're good. Okay, this stuff. This is preserves. Uh, sorry, yeah, well, basically jelly preserves. Strawberry preserves, nice square bottle, mm. uh, a whole pound. In a glass jar. In a glass jar without high, high fructose, fructose corn, corn syrup. It is actually sugar and strawberries and citric acid and that and pectin. That's it. So this is basically like buying organic strawberries or they also have raspberry. They have raspberry, strawberry, and grape. And grape. And you do not see 
cheap jelly anymore that doesn't have high fructose corn syrup. And those like, square jars are awesome because... Reusable can... jars. I mean, well, sort of. I mean, the cap doesn't lock like it should, like but you, you can use them for... Like, you can't can them again, you can't but can you, them, I mean, you, can... you could use them for nails. You could use... They're not plastic. They're not going to break. And they'll, you know, you not, can put some things in it. And they're great for storage because they're in glass, so it's not leaching stuff. You know, if, you can even if drink your storage out gets 100 degrees and you have this in a plastic container, it's going to leach in. Yeah. That is a great buy Speaking still, of, even at a buck 25. <laughs> this is a great buy at a buck 25. The Noki. Um, yeah, the this cheapest is, I can find it in any store is 229 229 So this is half price of anywhere that we can find it, and it's the same exact brand. Yep. Same exact brand. And it's imported from Italy, so it doesn't have um, a lot of the processed junk that the American Noki has. Uh, it's pretty much just, you know, it's, you got to remember, overseas wheat's usually better. It's not so GMO'd out. And uh, they use, especially for pasta wheats, they act different than regular wheat. And there's not that much wheat in these. There's a pretty low wheat. They just hold them together. It's mainly potato. This is a great buy for the amount of calories, density, and heavy. And if you don't know how to use gnocchi, um, you can eat them as a pasta. They grow, they cook super fast, so good for grid down. Within three minutes, they're cooked. Yep. And the other thing is... You can um, use them as dumplings. You, I was going to say, mm -hmm. you can just make pasta with them and put red sauce or some sort of sauce on them. But where we use them mostly is dumplings. We, we, we substitute up, them for dumplings. We bulk up soups with them. We throw it in our corn chowder soup, and it's delicious. Or our potato soup. We yeah, have a sweet, sweet potato, potato soup. soup. We throw it in there. It's delicious. So it's, um, do we have any other dollar store tree stuff? I think that's all that's left that is. A really, really good. Oh, excuse me. There is some stuff I'm going to show you. Let me take it back. The gardening. So right now, the gardening stuff has come in. Oh, and the seeds, we really did. They're not heirloom seeds, but they uh, are non-GMO. I forgot to put the picture of that in. But maybe it's in this picture. So these pots just came in. And if you're looking for cheap pots, say you're just starting the homestead and you don't have much, these are really high quality for a dollar. I was pretty impressed. Oh, sorry, $1.25. Um, and they have many kinds of different pots there. But I was really impressed. And they have some gardening hooks and they have stakes. They and have the little trowels and the little rakey so thing. And way cheaper than Lowe's or Home Depot. Way cheaper. Um, than most places uh, worth going to. They also, if you are looking, they also have grow bags. And I'm starting to become a big fan of, of grow now, bags. Those aren't the fabric ones. Those are made out of like tarp. Yeah. So but... I don't know how many years you get out of that, but for the price of like 25. Now I'll show you what we're using. Right now we are using these grow bags. These are on Amazon. They're 25 gallon. We're growing potatoes in them. So they look small, but they're actually really big. Like if you look to the left, you'll see some white containers. Those are 18 gallon tubs that we decided to use those instead of pots because they were $6.50 at Walmart. I think they're up to seven bucks now. Yeah. Seven bucks at Walmart, but way cheaper than what I could the buy. The $30 pot that pots was the same or size. trash cans for. Um, so we drilled some holes in the bottom and we're just using these. Now, the actual fabric um, pots, great way to, you know, obviously if you can grow your own food, that's where you really save money. But setup can be kind of expensive. Um, if you buy soil in bulk, like we buy, we contract with a guy that brings an entire dump truck for about $400. And it is incredible quality soil. Oh, it's amazing soil. It's like yeah. almost black. It's awesome. And we were able to put patches of stuff in. Like, um, let me show you some more stuff. So our daughter here is planting. Uh, these are our apple trees. So we don't, because this homestead is hasn't been worked in 40 years, there is no fruit trees anywhere. There's nothing on it. And we don't know where to put them because we don't know the rhythms of the land yet as far as water drainage. And There's a few, like, oak trees and sweet gum trees that are in there. We the don't know water, how they're... Yeah. And the water line uh, is only like somewhere between two and four inches down. So <laughs> you put a, a foot tree in there, at, yeah. depending where you're at. It's a, it's a crapshoot. And if you put it in the wrong place, you'll root rot it and kill the tree. So we're like, okay, we're just going to grow in containers for a bit until we figure it out. And because they're small trees, you can get away with that. So you can get an idea. And child labor is the sweetest labor. And here's her using the wheel hoe. And... Uh, 
She had to grab it low like that and use her waist to push through the dirt. <laughs> but, but she did it. She, she figured did. it out and did it's it. It's been great. So, uh, you know, growing your own food, and if you don't know how to do that, I would focus mainly on potatoes is where you're going to get the best bang. Sweet potatoes, potatoes, and maybe your greens. Those are pretty easy ones you can start greens with. Greens are easy. I think anybody can grow greens. Yeah. I think, uh, I think that's that. Did I get... And squash. Yeah, squash is a good... Like, anybody can grow zucchini, and you're going to end up with way more oh. than you need, usually. That's a good point. So the grow bags, uh, those big ones I had were 25 gallon, and I was getting them for three bucks each on Amazon if I bought them in bulk. Uh, they are out of the 25 gallon. I think they have 20, and those were like 250 each. So for 250 each, you got a grow bag that's way cheaper than a pot. Um, and they're really well made. Like I picked it up with dirt in it. Yeah, they're, they're really well made. Now you do not want to use grow bags on annuals because the roots will get tangled in the sides. If you ever want to take them out of the grow bags, you'll probably kill the plant. So you want to mainly use them on uh, perennials. Or sorry, not. I'm sorry if I said this wrong. You do not want to use them on perennials, things that grow over and over and over every year. You want to use them on annuals so you can just dump out the stuff and you don't worry about killing it. Like potatoes. Yeah, like trees and asparagus. and The trees, like you, you notice, not... we, we put them in the totes for a reason. Yep. Yeah. Because oh. originally our plan was to put them in the grow bags. Yeah. And then we watched that video out. and you're like, yeah, we're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Another huge money saver is bidets. Bidets are cheap right now. You can get a little toilet. To yeah, at Walmart, they're 20 bucks because people freaked out and what we're not allowed to say. And they um, ran out of toilet paper and went nuts. Bidets save you so much money on toilet paper. I mean, all you're really doing is drying. If you do use the bidet right, it should be clean and you should just be patting dry. And it'll be, I get away with one to two squares and that's it. Which is another reason why we have no problem doing the compost. And the compost is, I'm just throwing like wet toilet paper in, you know. Well, the composting. Oh, the compost you know, toilet. If we decide not to to um, compost the toilet paper, if you want it to go quicker, then you can so, you leave the paper out. There's two ways kind of, and we've been talking about this, trying to figure out. If you are off grid and you want to use a bidet, kind of one of the big no-nos with a compost toilet is putting too much water in, unless you're willing to sacrifice a lot of wood chips. Um, the bidets kind of create a lot of water. So what you could do is you can have a squeeze bidet. Uh, what do they call the ones that, that after women get pregnant and they wash themselves with? Oh, the it's for peri care. Peri care. You can get those things so you can use them off grid. Um, you can also use one of the bug sprays that you pump with pressure. If you want a lot of pressure to clean, you can use that to clean all kinds of stuff off grid. Yeah, we saw a meme about that. They were saying it was like... So what you it was wanted, supposed to be funny, but we were like, hey, that's, that's actually a, a good idea. idea. <laughs> the, the, the good way to do this um, would be to simply make a second bucket. So you do your number two in one bucket, and then you s stand up, move to another bucket, wash yourself, and keep all the... Go ahead, and if you need to go number one in there too, put all the liquids in one, a separate bucket. So you basically just make two seats, and then you can wash yourself, and it, um, you want to keep... Your number two, I can say poo, I think. You want to keep as your, dry as possible. You want to keep it as dry as possible. So you don't want to keep throwing, you know, bidet water. And, if you don't want to change it. And you're in and there unless, yeah, unless you're going to use a lot of wood chips and you don't mind changing it. So the simpler thing is to have two buckets and just get up and wash yourself in the second bucket. And honestly, with the, I was thinking about it, we could actually use a drain system for Yeah, because it's pretty much just water. It would just... I mean, there might be a little fecal matter, but, you know, you, that's not, like, actually taking full-blown things, you know. That, that can go on the ground easy pretty quick. Yeah. You know, it wouldn't be a big deal, probably, to drain that out. Or you can put a catch in it and just use it as, throw it in your fertilizer so it never goes out. You that can too. make a drain that catches it. and um, A lot of times they have those gravity ones that are, like, buckets. So the fecal matter would hit the bottom and then it would run out. And it would yeah. just be like a trap that catches it. And that might be a smart way to go, so then you can compost that. And, you know, urine's really good to compost with, too, if you want to catch your urine. All right. Um, we talked about bidets and how much money they save on paper and just how much cleaner it is, honestly. It's kind of like having a half shower. We can't go anywhere. I'm like... so spoiled. And it's... I mean, it's... 
Paper's just gross to me. It's like archaic. You're wiping it over and over and you can't ever get it 100% really clean unless you use like a wet wipe. You know, I mean, you, it's hard to do it with paper. It I mean, is. You waste I hate a ton going of paper. to public bathrooms and going to friends' houses. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it needs like some sort of liquid I'm such to, a, a bathroom to get things completely now. clean. So the bidet is awesome, man. I just can't go. I can't go without it. I don't care. Make fun of me all you want. I don't give a damn because the bidet is awesome. The bidet is awesome, and also, you know, dysentery is the number one cause of disease in a grid jam situation. I forgot about so, that. Like, yeah, cleanliness dysentery is a big thing. No joke. She's she's absolutely right. When when you go off grid, cleanliness hygiene becomes a major issue. Like little stuff take you out if cross contamination. Um. Okay. The next thing. So if you're doing these garden projects, believe it or not, you can still get free pallets out there and you want to get the heat treated ones. Don't get the ones that are blasted with chemicals. Uh, for a while, when the thing we're not allowed to say came out, people weren't even giving away the pallets. They were like, no, you well, can't lumber even Lumber went them. insane. And lumber went insane. And lumber's still pretty insane. Um, but they've relaxed a lot. And I've started to talk to stores again. And they're like, yeah, come get our pallets. So you can get them. And use them for all kinds of stuff but like I building think beds. But that is only going to be for a limited time because once the shipping once starts, once the shipping starts, them. they're going to get stuff with them. Yeah, they're going to hold on to them again. Or the, but people have kind of gotten used to the crazy wood prices now, so it's not as scary. Well, nobody's really getting the pallets either. Like, so you can get free pallets still. So go pick them up before it's too late. And if you really need wood, you can buy something called coal wood, which means this is the wood that is warped or a little chipped that they can't really put in. It's bashed up. Which is crazy because they're selling really low quality wood. We had to search for over an hour just to find to get the boards, for, boards. The, um, for the sawbuck. Yeah, the sawbuck, that video, if you want to watch us build the sawbuck, an hour. We had to go through two stacks of wood to it find straight forever. wood. Ever. They, they are selling just junk. So the coal wood is like the bent, the busted, stuff like that. But if you surf through it enough, you can find some decent pieces. And the coal wood is like pennies on the dollar. And what you do is you go to something like Lowe's or Home Depot and you ask the person, you're like, where's the, the call or the throw out wood? And they'll be like, oh, it's not even in the store. It's on the side of the store in the parking lot. And you walk out there and you pick it out and it's all massively discounted. So it's a great way to get longer pieces of wood that you don't have for pallets. And a lot of people don't know about it, that it even exists. So there you go. And the last tip I would say to save money don't is spend. by not spending it. <laughs> don't, don't spend the money. Don't go out to eat. Like on some stuff, you if you're going to spend money, it should be on things to build your life uh, for homestead, not so much for... Like, honestly, uh, I would be irritated all the time if you wanted to go out and eat all the time. Like, every it's Friday night. We got to order pizza. I would much rather have I a would much solar rather you panel save than a that pizza. Up, yeah, and get me... Uh, solar panels or so, you know just anything uh, an appliance that's gonna make our life easier off grid yep or for what's coming now the other thing <laughs> is uh lastly because you know you'll be like save money when i say save money i am not talking about keeping in your bank account because i think you're crazy to keep money in a bank right now uh you want to liquidate as much money as you can get out and put it into things um, so it's not don't spend any money. It's, it's don't spend, don't money, spend on money on silly on, things. On silly stuff that you can't account for. If it doesn't have a name and a purpose, don't buy it. If you're just like, oh, I don't know. We went to the mall and I, I blew two hundred dollars. It's like, one, what are you doing in a mall? <laughs> you know, if you're trying to save money, what are you doing there? And two, was any of that money planned, or did you just walk in and have fun spend? Like it needs to be at this point with the way inflation's going. Every dollar should have. A name on it of this is what we need and this is what I'm saving and I know it sucks because we're kind of like checking out of society I want to go see a movie and have fun okay maybe do that on your birthday or something for special you well, know, even not... birthdays like we made the decision this year that instead of spending a bunch of money on going out and doing something that it would be much better to get things that would yeah. be you know fun for the rest you know the next several years and I think you might have to have a talk with your significant other if that's the issue is they're blowing money like crazy and you're like, hey, world's falling apart. We need to put some away. So you need to have that hard talk and hopefully they're starting to see it. I mean, when they go to the gas pump and it's $100 to fill up a tank, 
they better be seeing it. I don't I don't know what else has to happen to wake people up enough that well, this is not I kind of feel going like away and it's see serious. it more than three times and it just becomes their new normal and they just like, like okay. oh, what are you going to do? I'm outraged for a day and what are you going to do? And that's kind of with all social media. Like it, it, I I'm out of outrage. I can't get angry at stuff anymore because uh, Every day is five different things I should be absolutely livid about. Well, so and now I, I see I'm, it and I'm, I'm just tired. like, okay, how do we get around that? Yeah. Like, that's what my brain automatically goes to now. And so hopefully you're taking your, you know, running a good defense, buying hard, and stockpiling because it's probably never going to be this price again in your lifetime. Uh, start buying what you can and hold on to it and uh, help your friends and family. Tell them so you're not having to feed them. You know, uh, they should be responsible. They're grown adults. They should be also taking care of the future for themselves. You can watch our video about yeah, we what have... to do when people say, oh, my plan is to come to your place. Yeah, that's our favorite. <laughs> You're our plan B. We're just going to show up at your doorstep. And it's like, there's a couple of abandoned roads, uh, you know, houses <laughs> down the road. Try to pick those over. Good luck. Uh, but no. No, you're not. You're not my plan B. So you're not coming in. Um, that being said, hopefully you guys are. You guys, if you're watching this, you're hip to this, and if you've stayed this long, you're actually interested in these topics. I would say uh, we probably have until next fall. The fall is when this stuff's really, really going to get out of hand. So I think you've got a few months to try to really hustle, but you better buy the stuff now that you like because it's just going to get everything has jumped 30 to 40 percent and i don't see that going to stop i think it's going to jump again and jump again but it'll probably go like 10 percent i don't know uh, gas went up i don't know 203 percent you know like it it was shocking how fast gas went up gas went up crazy so i don't see why i think wheat's going to probably go up like that once because wheat just isn't going to exist much. I think there's just going to be things like, I think bread's going to get really expensive. You're not going to have all the, yeah. you know, you go to the grocery store now and there's 20 different kinds of bread you can get. I don't think that's going to happen. There's going to be a huge wheat shortage in the and price I don't of think, fertilizer. I think pasta is pretty much going to be like, you're going to get spaghetti noodles and maybe some, but I mean, things that everybody thought was, you know, this was the traditional cheap, easy food to stock up on. Top ramen, gone. Yeah. And mac and cheese. Like, if there's no wheat, there's no pasta, and... Oh, on a side note, I, I do want to change this since we're talking about growing food. Fertilizers. Oh, um, yeah. Now, there's a bunch of fertilizer plants burned down. There's a bunch of fertilizer stuff not shipping anymore. And if you've listened to the big guys, uh, we had listened to that one guy in a comment say, I don't remember where we heard it, but he normally spends $30,000 on fertilizer. It was uh, $30,000... On fertilizer, and this is just a small farm. This isn't like one of the great big, big yeah. ag farms. So he said their costs are normally thirty thousand dollars, and he couldn't even get most places to give him a quote or commit to selling. Like he still hasn't found anybody to actually sell him, but he did finally get a quote from somebody that what cost him thirty thousand dollars before will cost a hundred thousand now, and they did not commit to even selling it to him. Yeah, a hundred thousand, and you might get it. And if not, sorry, here's your money back. I guess you're starving. You know, like... Like, we'll let... Basically, they told him, okay, for that much, it'll be a hundred grand, and we'll let you know if we've got it to sell to you. So, so Big Agro has a choice. Um, they either have to f spend a ton of money on fertilizer and pass that through to you and hope you buy it, or just... Which is risky if everybody's broke. Sit it out for a year and say, I'll wait till next year to see. Maybe this will all be fixed which is unrealistic because I don't think it's going to get fixed or they're going to switch to convention uh, to organic methods and that is going to be a pricey change for them too. The good news for you though is these are mainly the ones suffering right now are the big players and the people that are growing all their food chemically. If you are an organic farmer your stuff's already kind of expensive your fertilizer and you should be making your own fertilizers anyway think a lot of them and do. composting but if you're new like us where we're on a land and we're in a race to get this set up before the collapse we didn't have a lot of choice we had to buy things like uh 
with biochar. We made our own biochar out of charcoal and, and some... Yeah, we didn't have time to burn the wood we, this time. We didn't have time, and what we still did it. And one of the, the, the nice things I'd also say is um, you can substitute some things like alfalfa pellets. Now, alfalfa squares are awesome at building nitrogen in your soil, and they're still cheap. And you just rip them up, put them in water, and spread them out. And it's a great, great source. So there are cheap alternatives to uh, building your soil up. And the free one is to go in the woods and scrape the scrape some from underneath some trees and throw it in your garden because it already has the bacteria set up. It already has the fungus. Yep. You know, you can go that route. Now you're taking a gamble. You might bring in some weird element, but you know what? Gardening has weird elements all the time. Like you, you could buy a bunch of soil and... And have stuff in it. Really yeah, so really there's no much. guarantees. Uh, that is the cheaper way to do it. Obviously, I'll say this though: if you're going to go to a forest, do not take everything around one tree. They need that. That's kind of a jerk thing to do. You're killing that tree, or you're making it hard for them. Just take a little from each tree. You know, a little bit here, a little bit, a little haircut, a little haircut, and that that, that won't hurt them at all. Um, so it's again a, a question of how much time do you have compared to money. And if you have no composting. money, then get creative. Oh, compost. yeah, start composting. It, do compost tea, you know. Like, if you need something right away, you can do compost tea. Yeah. So, for us small players where I'm not growing an agro farm, this is not going to affect my actual growth too much. But where it will affect you is when you want to buy pasta, when you want to buy some crackers, when you want to buy, like, all that massive stuff that's produced with these chemicals. Sandwich bread. You know, they will probably... My theory is for another year, a lot of... Fertilizer still in reserve, so I think they'll buy some, uh, but they will have either smaller crops, or the government will just give them money not to grow stuff. Well, and I mean they'll subsidize it. Big and farming is I think risky that stuff anyway. Will triple and yeah, they can't. Like, most big farms can't do it without. All it takes is one flood, one drought. But they have freeze. insurance for that, and they also have the government. Uh, most of the massive farms. Are totally getting huge. Oh, I'm not subsidies. talking about the money. I'm talking about if only half the people are farming. Yeah. And then a flood comes through and oh, a major weather kills event. that crop. Then that means there's nothing. Yeah, there's no more oranges. You know, like. And especially if nobody's exporting. So you you have to consider all that. Um, and like I was saying, there are ways for you to grow your own food to have a lot more security. And hopefully you can balance that because eventually you'd like to get 100% of whatever you grow, you can self-sustain. But it's pretty hard to do right off the bat. And most of your food will be coming from stores still. And right now, things like that you like that are made of wheat, I'd buy them. Get them while you can. I think in a few months they're going to be insanely and expensive and hard to get. just make peace with not having it anymore. Yeah, or just not it'd be like, okay, I guess I'm eating oat crackers. Like, you know, or not. seriously, when things went all crazy in 2020, I quit coffee, and I was a huge coffee drinker. I love coffee. I yeah. still miss the taste of it. I don't crave it or anything, but I... Yeah, when you smell it brewing, you're like, oh, that's so oh, nice. I miss coffee, but, I mean, I know it's not good for me, and I know that it's not going to be around, so I would much rather have it be my choice to quit it and just not have it anymore mm. and and it's one it's expensive and it's just i don't know Good the whole points. thing is yeah. it's it's a hard reality i would I mean, just much rather quit it than in a high stress situation when all you want is you know coffee and cigarettes and you can't get them anymore yeah let's tell you how fun that's going to be when you're teamed up with those people that have to come off their addictions in a high stress situation or even let's, worse like let's add that what to about in... the drug addicts you know, that that's, are violently sick, alcoholics. And... I don't know because I, I, I mean, I guess if you take a heroin junkie and just withdraw them, their blood pressure, I mean, it can kill them. A lot of times it does. And so I think a lot of these people are going to die when the drugs stop, I would think. And then so I think, think the other like... ones are going to, the mental, there's so many mental imbalances, people like straight up nuts running I'm around. I'm thinking about the alcoholics, like... They're the ones that get really upset and I think really mean. They'll probably spend their entire focus on making alcohol instead of food. They'll be like, okay, how do I brew? Here, I probably, can make hooch. Like, they'll, they'll just make hooch. I'll 
ferment peaches in my boot and yeah that mean that's the prison toilet huge you know that they they don't give it up they'll find a way to make it and maybe some of that will go on with the drugs too but i think probably kill them too because most of that's toxic and well it's estimated that what is it now almost a quarter of women are on some sort of antidepressant oh i think it's i think it's almost 50 percent now and so what happens when all those run out in a high stress situation and you're coming off coffee and coming off junk food and coming off cigarettes all at the same time you know what is that person going to be like oh and on top of it they have with diabetes. you yeah and they're already yeah. sick and they can't get their high blood pressure and i mean uh, it's, it's, just, it's a storm it's a storm and i don't want to be anywhere near those kind of people when this happens because i don't want that responsibility I've had to ride that well, out oh well basically you're a caregiver at that point yeah like that's a, you're not going to have time to grow food because you're going to be cleaning up somebody who's Pieces. violently ill well, that spun off on a different direction there. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about um, if you want to, I think we've kept this clean enough to put it on YouTube, so this will probably go up there. But if you actually want to see way more of what we talk about and you enjoy these talks and you just put them on the background and do your thing and clean and use us kind of like a podcast, um, we have, we probably do something every week over at Brighteon and Odyssey. We also put it over at BitChute. And the, those are completely uncensored, and you can hear what we're actually thinking, and we go a lot deeper into topics. Um, I would say we probably only put up one video to every four to five on YouTube. So if you're only watching on YouTube, you're missing 75% of our stuff. Easy. Easy. So go check us out on Odyssey. There's actually a code you can uh, go in there with. You can look in the description below. If you sign up an account and put this code under, there's like a reward section, you can go claim rewards. Uh, they'll give you 50 library coins and that's, uh, and hey man, really that's works. free crypto. It. Yeah, it's free crypto and you can tip us and support us that way if you want or just keep it yourself. The other thing is, you know, you can use our Amazon links below. It really helps the show since we get almost no money from YouTube. YouTube's completely censored us. Um, and I don't get anything off of Odyssey or Brighteon. So... We're just doing this for free just because we want to reach out and, and I think it's important. But it does help us buy tools uh, for our homesteading if you go through the Amazon link below and before you buy something. Or if you click our affiliate links we put in here, we get a little piece of that money. Uh, the rule with that though is when you click it, you can't be in Amazon already. So like if you have a cart already in Amazon, it doesn't work. It doesn't give us credit. So you have to go in cold from the link to Amazon and say, okay, he reviewed this chainsaw. I want to buy this chainsaw. And then you have to buy it pretty much right away. If you let it sit in your car for 24 hours, they don't give us credit. So you have to go through the link, open it, it up new in your browser and click it. And then we actually get credit. You don't actually have to buy the thing though. That you no, you can buy a different thing. You can but, buy whatever you but want. But your shopping right? experience has to end. Yeah. That has to start and end and all with that one that one section thing. you can't just like turn it off and keep it in your cart um that really helps believe it or not because we used it to uh, buy some uh some tools uh it's the only way we're really making any sort of living on that and i appreciate it if you go through there lastly we are homesteading in south carolina and we are um plant-based which are basically like a, a vegan spiritual community we're trying to build a homestead if that's your vibe, come check us out on the Telegram group, and we are looking for people that are excited about living and building a place and helping us get this going. And we can check it out and see if we're a good match. So come into our Telegram group for Looptopia, and if even if you're not interested in you know coming, it's still a really active group, and we learn a lot of stuff. There's a lot of great posts in there. Oh, yeah. And it's uncensored there. We talk about all the stuff we're not allowed to say here. Um, I think I covered all bases, didn't I? I believe so. Okay. So we love you guys. Take care of each other and we will see you very soon. Check out our other videos and feel free to binge us. Bye.